Good morning again, and we're so excited to have our discussion this morning. Yes. It's going to be something really interesting because we are talking about the mangrove. Exactly, especially after that fascinating video presentation. Amazing. We're going to ask some questions about that as well. <laughs> so joining us today, we have uh, Professor Daniel Murdiarso, uh, Principal Scientist with C4, Center for International Forest Research. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining us this morning. Yeah. We understand that you just arrived, arrived actually. from uh, Egypt last yeah. night, but now... It's a pleasure to be here. Already here, so yeah, thank <laughs> yeah. you. So um, before we speak more about the mangrove, uh, please tell us more about the video, the amazing video yeah. that we just uh, saw earlier. Yeah, we, we work with students, with local community and mm. local government in various places mm. in the most degraded mangrove mm. along the coastal northern coast of Java mm. and we try to see what's happened there right and in fact it's been degraded in the past let's say 30 years uh -huh. so in order to put it back it's not an easy task uh -huh. but I'm, I'm glad to hear that here in Bali in right. Indonesia has been demonstrating the nice thing about what we've been doing with mangrove restoration mm -hmm. and um, learning from what we've seen in the field mm -hmm. Uh, restoration is very important, but more importantly is conserving the existing ones mm -hmm. because it's not going to be easy to restore those mm -hmm. uh, degraded mangroves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So before we dive in into uh, more about mangroves, for our, our viewers who are not uh, familiar with C4, can you, you tell us, uh, explain a little bit about what C4 is doing, you know, what C4 is for yeah. the, the, the viewers? Right. C4 is an international organization. Uh, we work in 30 plus countries. Uh, mainly dealing with forests and related issues, people living around and within the forest. Mm. But at the same time, I'm also a professor at IPB University. Mm. Both are in Bogor, so mm. it's quite easy to work you know, <laughs> with the two organizations. Close vicinities. Both Close vicinities, exactly. yeah. yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful yeah. area. So well. we've been hearing a lot about mangrove forests yeah. this past few days, especially after the mangrove planting, planting ceremony yeah. between yeah. the G20 mm -hmm. leaders. Right. And we've heard a lot of facts about yeah. how important they are, how essential they are, how pivotal they are to the environment preservation. But maybe you can enlighten us even more, Prof, and tell us what are the conditions of the mangrove forests in Indonesia? Right, so we used to have much more than 3.3 million hectares. Mm -hmm. in, back in 1980s, uh, almost 4, 4, million, uh, 4 million hectares. Yeah, But uh -huh. it's in the past 30 years, until 2005, it has been deforested and degraded. So we have uh, as much as 3.3 so far. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is very important to, to keep the mangrove intact mm. because it's uh, not only storing a lot of carbon, yeah. but also provide a lot of uh, opportunities for local community, uh, for their livelihood, mm. a fishing community, etc. Yeah. So it's very important to have mangrove along the coastline. Yeah. And in the context of climate change, as we discuss uh, right now in, in Egypt, yeah. um, mangrove is uh, has been playing a very important role and will be playing even more mm -hmm. in the changing climate environment when mm -hmm. the sea level is rising. Mm -hmm. So if you have mangrove intact, it's very likely that uh, this ecosystem will be protecting the mm -hmm. area behind it. Mm -hmm. okay. Not only that, it's also developed land mm -hmm. so that the, the rising sea level will be coped by the having with new land mm. uh, because the sedimentation is much higher than sea level rise. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. You mentioned about the deforestation that mm -hmm. happened with the mangrove forest in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what caused it? Well, in the past, uh, the expansion of aquaculture, mainly fish and shrimp ponds, mm. okay. has been very rampant back in 1980s to 19. Well, early 2000, mm. uh, a lot of mangroves have been deforested because and con converted into yeah. aquaculture. Uh, mm. aquaculture. Yes. So, which part of Indonesia that uh, these damages yeah. have, have been? Southern part of Sumatra, Lampung, and mm. then northern part also North Sumatra, mm. and East Kalimantan, mm. and part of Papua. Part of Papua, but yes. now in Indonesia, Indonesia is uh, one of the la the largest yeah, Prof, yeah? It is. The it largest, is. Uh, uh, Mangrove in yes, the world. In the world. So I, I like the tagline that mm. uh, Indonesia mangrove for the world. Mm. It's not only because it uh, contains a lot of carbon, but also yeah. you know, sh uh, 
contributing in, in mitigating climate change. So one okay. quarter of the uh -huh. world mangrove is here in Indonesia. Uh -huh. wow. yeah. So from the research uh, point of view, uh, Prof, how, how important is uh, mangrove in Indonesia for uh, the world? Well, one is a climate change issue, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's been mentioned in, in Egypt mm -hmm. about the role of coastal ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So and well, that was one of the topics that was uh, exactly. discussed. Yeah. Yes, and um, now the, the land and ocean linkages is, is quite, quite important discussed yeah. in, in mm -hmm. the climate change agenda. Mm -hmm. And coastal zone is, is uh, the place where this interaction happens. And in um, the communique, the declaration of Bali, Bali yeah. you can yeah. see declaration number six, number 10, number 11, mm -hmm. all are related with climate change. Mm. Okay. And mangrove is playing a very important role, important role okay. in yeah. that. So uh, you mentioned that a professor just got back from Egypt. Yeah. Um, what was the topic about mangrove that was discussed in that uh, conference as yeah. well? What was the conclusion? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it has not been concluded yet oh, okay. uh, until okay. maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Yes, and, uh, but a number of things has been discussed and probably will be decided, especially on the issue of finance, mm. uh, how to help you know, countries funding having funding. For, for, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's known as Article 6, mm -hmm. so it's dealing with carbon trading, uh, non-market mechanism, those kind of stuff. Okay. So countries like Indonesia and other countries having mangrove will be very much expecting that it will be resolved so that okay. they can protect the mangrove mm. with the support from the international community. Okay. Okay. Prof, to go back to the forest lost issue, and you mentioned the financial aspect of mm -hmm. it all, because we are still in the G20 right. and right. economic forum, so maybe if you can give us a better <laughs> picture, you know, give us uh, more context could you tell us how much of those, this forest loss, if we translate it in rupiah, in territory loss, <laughs> if any? Maybe our viewers then, then can have right, right. a better idea yeah. of well, actually and, the loss that we experience. How much can we gain? Nah, if, you know, exactly. Also, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I don't want to uh, give you sort of <laughs> expectation, but right. uh, I want to put it in the reverse direction. Okay. All right. If you avoid deforestation, okay. Yeah. Let's say on mangrove alone, yeah. Yeah. you can avoid as much as 200 million ton a year. 200 million? 200 million. A lot. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you multiply by the price of carbon, let's say $5. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just multiply that amount okay. yearly. Okay, okay. If you manage to avoid deforestation. So the foregone deforestation is the loss, right? Right. Yeah. So if we, we can change our way of handling mangrove, mm. that will be the benefit, more or less, that mm. we can get only from mangrove. Okay. Mm. But if we are talking about the other services that mangrove can provide, yeah. uh -huh. that's much, much bigger. Which are? So one hectare is about $93,000, US dollar, oh. per year. Okay. Just one hectare. One hectare. Yeah. Okay. So if you have three million, then yeah. it's a significant exactly. yeah. Yeah. amount. So that's okay. the net present value of mangrove if you manage to mm. conserve it. So okay. is, uh, are, are those, is it the same whether it's like a young mangrove and a middle-aged mangrove <laughs> and <laughs> old mangroves? Or yeah. uh, no, it's, it's different, <laughs> completely different. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's why planting mangrove does not you know, uh, assure you that you will have it in the future. Oh, really? So okay. It's very important that when you plant mangrove today, it has to be protected. How? You have to involve local community mm -hmm. because they are the one who live with this you know, mangrove ecosystem daily. Mm. So it has to be part of their life. Mm. So livelihood issue has to be taken care of. Mm. So it's not only, mang not only carbon, you know, if yeah. we are talking about ecosystem services, mm. it's about people. So it's, it's the whole area. It's just not. It's not just yeah. the plants, but also the, yeah. the people, the, the landscape, the yeah. landscape, the, the economy. Yeah, yeah, related to right. it. The livelihood right. related yeah. to it. Yeah. So how long does it take from um, a, a, a mangrove that just been planted until it yeah. re reaches a maturity? Yeah. From right. seed yeah. to ecosystem yeah. to yeah. livelihood that depends on it. Right. It varies because we have many different type of oh. mangrove okay. or landscape. Yeah. Like the river Rhine has different characteristic compared with the delta. Mm. compared with the fringing mangrove and, and also the challenges are different. Mm. Okay. So if you have it in the reaper, reaper line, 
and lagoon it's very uh, likely they, they will be they will survive mm. but if you have it in the open ocean uh -huh. it's very difficult be because because of the wave because of the uh, current of the sea and more importantly because the uh, livelihood I mean the, the tenure system is uh -huh. not clear so it's very important to solve the problem of land tenure mm. meaning that people feel that you know they own it uh. so uh, it's not only technical issues but also social issues very important okay okay mm -hmm. not actually not just people and local communities uh, mm -hmm. actually can take benefit from the mangroves but yeah. there's also a huge biodiversity exactly that yeah. lives yeah. from the mangroves could you tell right. us more about yeah. that Prof? right so the biodiversity of mangrove itself is very rich mm -hmm. especially in indonesia we have more than 40 species 40 species mm -hmm. that's that's okay. the vegetation yeah. the mangrove itself but it also provides um, habitat for yeah. various you know flora and fauna mm -hmm. Um, and they are very important in keeping the ecosystem intact, mm -hmm. including, for example, crabs. Crabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are hundreds of species of oh. crab, which uh, play important role in uh, digesting mm. the litter when it falls on the mm. ground, mm. and then you know uh, consume it and put it there as organic material. Mm. So that little creature is very very important. Mm. And then fishes, uh, mangrove is very good place for the juvenile of fish mm. to be protected. Oh, okay. You see the, the shape of the, the root? Right. Yeah. That so will protect the juvenile, uh -huh. the fish, from the predators. predators. Yes. So it's, it's very important. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And we saw uh, at the mangrove planting yeah. ceremony with the leaders, right. how interested the leaders are, yeah. knowing all these little facts that was right. explained Real, by... Realizing how big the impact yeah. it has on yeah. the world. Yeah. So uh, compared to uh, other form of forest, let's mm. say, uh, and when you compare the, the capability of mangrove in, in restoring uh, nature, say, mm -hmm. uh, is it the same? Is it different? How, how are those different kind of forests uh, right. has a different... Mangrove, mangrove is very unique okay. for us mm -hmm. because it is located in the coastal zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has to have the mixture of saline water from right. the ocean and the fresh water from the river. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without these two uh, different uh, situations, mangrove cannot survive. Oh, so. And they are also living in a, a zone called um, tidal range. Tidal? So tidal range, tidal range okay. of the oh. sea level, or the waves. The waves. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's to make sure that uh, the saline water is supplied to this ecosystem. Mm. Terrestrial forests cannot do, cannot survive yeah. with that. Uh -huh. Only mangrove species can do that. Okay. okay. So in restoring mangrove, it is very important to have a good <coughs> mixture of fresh and yeah, saline, saline water. water. Yes. It's okay. not only planting but you have to improve the hydrology of the ecosystem. Improve the hydrology. Okay. Mm. A certain technologies yeah. need to be is used. That, yeah, is that can be, you know. Yeah, uh, done naturally yeah, or, or, or humans have to intervene to make sure right. that the yes. mangroves right. are yes. well protected and well, so Well, in, in many degraded mangroves, the hydrology has been damaged also okay. because of the pond, because of the dikes. Mm. So you have to okay. uh, liberate you know, the landscape from that kind of blockade. I see. Mm -hmm. So the sea water can enter it and then the, the fresh water okay. can go oh. out. So like a specific kind of irrigation is needed then? Drainage and yeah. irrigation, yes, okay. that's right. So yeah. it's not right. just planting, but also yeah. it's not just you planting. have to... Yeah. It's a In whole some, system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. In some places, uh, planting is not even needed. Oh, oh because as long they're as, good. Yeah, as long as you provide a <laughs> they good environment. Themselves. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. they will colonize. That's this. really interesting. Yeah? Yeah. I've it always is. thought that when <laughs> it comes to uh, you know, uh, reforestation, it's yeah. always planting. And right. I, I just realized now that it yeah. turns out that when you improve the condition of the ecosystem yeah. itself, and then right. it yeah. will regenerate, it will yeah. uh, heal uh, itself. Exactly. Yeah. That's really yeah. interesting. So this is the, the unique thing of mango. Okay. Uh. It's completely different. Uh. Now, my curiosity is, yeah. because of the G20 member countries come from such diverse, diverse. Mm. countries with diverse climates yeah. as well. Right. Does that also factor in with uh, you know, preservation of 
mango forests in each country. I see the. Is it just the, tropical? Like you know? the prime minister of <laughs> Netherlands, I yeah. saw was very interested in right, it. He right, asked a lot yeah, of questions. Yeah. Would that work as well in like Western countries, Prof? Right. Well, uh, the life zone of mangrove is very narrow. Okay. It's not only tropical, but slightly going up to the subtropical okay. region slightly going as up well. To the yeah. Subtropical. Yes. Okay. But the other um, blue carbon ecosystem, uh -huh. including mangrove, uh, grow in a higher altitude, latitude as well, okay. oh. like the salt marsh. The salt marsh. Salt marsh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is another blue carbon another ecosystem. Another blue carbon ah. ecosystem. And it's sea grass. Sort of like mangroves. Uh, salt marsh is uh, grassy kind of ah, landscape. Okay. I see. Okay. But they, they can manage with this kind of situation with salty and fresh water. I see. I see. And also seagrass and mm. okay. kelps. They grow in a high latitude like the Netherlands they, oh, and okay. the US. So yeah. maybe they adopt the concept but like with different vegetation or different Different vegetation, plantation. different species, but they have okay. similar kind of characteristic with mangrove which grow up mm. like that. Mm. Okay. How optimistic are you, Prof? I mean, yesterday we saw it as, you know, one of the agendas, yeah. one of the ceremonies right, conducted, right. and we hope that it can use as inspiration yeah. by the other leaders, but how optimistic are you that well. this <laughs> specific agenda will actually be carried out as, you know? Right. Uh, I am most I am optimistic if, you know, all these activities involve local community. Mm. Okay. And also, uh, enhance or uh, develop the understanding amongst the young people mm. because they are the one who own the future right yeah this mangrove we are planting today will grow in the next you know 20 30 years to mm. come mm. and they are the one who should know right now right yes. yes. and it's very important to make them aware that this is important species important mm. ecosystem for them without their involvement yeah. i don't think we we are going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, completely That's true. agree. So That's hopefully true. our young viewers uh, watching right now could be I more informed so. about what's, what's yeah. going on uh, with the world. And Actually, you know. for most of young millennials yeah. and Gen Z specifically, climate change is a big issue. Right. Yeah. Maybe they care even more about it than, That's you know, the older generation. Quite does. possible, especially because, because it's their future. the flow of information is, yeah. is also more readily available for yeah. them. And right. You know they're excited about getting all these informations and yeah. are hoping to do something about it. Yeah. And we hear more and more young people, in a way, protesting mm. about mm. you know the lack of action yeah. that is now right. happening around the world. So, mm -hmm. Prof, since you're here, if you don't mind me asking, <laughs> let's get away for a while from you know all the D20 agendas and the activities and even the jargons right. and everything. Could you please enlighten us, especially our viewers, the condition of the climate change right now and how we should prepare for it because we've been hearing these stories that are actually buried you know yeah. under so many other headlines that are happening with the geopolitical tension right. with this undertaking of business deals and so on we hear and see this tiny headlines about you know climate change <laughs> issues now you have center stage prof you have the limelight <laughs> thank you very much what, well, is going what on a privilege right yeah. <laughs> this is not a tiny thing it's yeah. a big issue especially yeah. for the future generation you know we are expecting to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases and even having a net zero emission in 2050 or 2060 or earlier for indonesia that's that's a big job to do we, one single country cannot do it alone. Yeah. One little community cannot do it alone. We have to work it as, you know, global community. Now, the situation is that uh, we have to reduce as much as, I don't know whether you can imagine, 30 billion ton yearly. Okay. Now, we, we have an excess of carbon dioxide of 50 something billion ton. So if you do it annually, 30 billion plus the additional one, you might end up with net zero emission in 2050 or 2060. 2050. Or 2060, I think Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, right. Target. Okay. And in the horizon of 2030, we are expected to have uh, the increase of uh, mean temperature of less than 1.5 degrees C. Which is the, was the point of no return, is it? Point of no return, you can call it that way, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. But I'm worried now. Uh, after going to, to Egypt, okay. COP27, you uh -huh. know, the debate there is not going closer to that kind of, uh -huh. you know, situation. Oh, so. And uh, based on the report of the IPCC, the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, 
today the increase of temperature is already 1.2 degrees C. Okay. okay, so it's only eight years to come to make this steady increase, you know, slower. Mm. And that needs a lot of effort, especially in the energy sector. Okay. And with okay. the current situation of energy crisis, the war and the economic crisis, yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about yeah. this. Yeah, it makes it uh, extra difficult. Mm -hmm. It extra is already difficult as already it is. It's already difficult. And yeah. now with yeah. all these yeah. new exactly. challenges. Right. We're going to talk about that a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. But yeah. now <laughs> we're going to talk about mangrove forests. Yes, absolutely. Mangrove forests have been a vital role in resisting abrasion. However, its existence is threatened by increasing uh, land conversion activities to contamination of liquid waste. Uh, Professor Muriyaso from the Department of Geophysics and Meteorology at IPB in Indonesia is a world leader and pioneer in mangrove research and climate change adaptation and mitigation. So here is a short interview with a Professor about the importance of uh, mangroves. Let's have a look. Today I'm talking to Professor Daniel Muriyaso from the Department of Geophysics and Meteorology at IPB in Indonesia. He is a world leader and pioneer in mangrove research and climate change adaption and mitigation. Hi, Professor Mori. So happy Mangrove Day. Hey, Robert. Uh, happy Mangrove Day, too. What yeah. are mangroves? Well, mangrove is a group of plants that live in what we call coastal zones, just in the fringe of the coast where fresh and saline or salty water meet. So they are able to grow in that situation, very unique environment that requires special structure and capability of the plants to survive and grow. And mangrove can do that. Cool. Why are they so important? Mangrove is a very important uh, ecosystem or forest, but we have been losing mangroves so much these days. And uh, in the past, we have lots of them, but in the last 50 years, uh, we lose it, almost half of it, and now we only have around 15 million uh, hectares. Mangroves specifically the underwater habitat, roots provide critical environments for thousands of underwater species, including my favorite animals, the sea turtles. What is happening to these forests? Uh, we are losing lots of mangrove rubber. Um, it's about 50,000 plus hectare per year. That's about the size of the city of Toronto every single year. So that's what happened uh, on mangrove forests. Mangroves can be up to 10 times more efficient than terrestrial ecosystems at absorbing carbon long-term, making them a critical solution in the fight against climate change. I read that two acres of mangrove alone can sequester 1,316 kilograms of carbon a year, which is the same amount of carbon produced by driving across Canada from coast to coast in an SUV. Why are people not planting more mangroves to take advantage of this? Because it is not easy, Robert, and expensive. People often fail to plant mangrove because they have to face the problem of waves and other disturbance so that the plants cannot succeed. The plantlet, very small seedling, cannot succeed. So I think people should think about conserving the existing ones. It's better to do that while trying to rehabilitate, to restore the degraded one. So protecting the existing one is very important. Yeah, mangrove forests and their thick root systems are vital to protecting shorelines from storm surges, an increasing threat in a changing global climate with storms and rising sea levels. Is there anything kids can do to help mangroves? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Kids are very fascinated with mangrove, I think, because this is a very special plant with a very charismatic shape. Uh, the, the root system is anchoring like that, very strong. So if you visit mangrove, you will be astonished by 
the fact that they are so strong in protecting uh, everything behind it, wave, etc., uh, will be scared away so that mangrove helps, you know, and, and at the same time, they also uh, hold soil. So kids can appreciate that when, when you walk through mangrove, you can see how life is so dynamic there. You can see crabs, they are eating leaves as soon as they fall on the ground, they will be eaten and bring it down to their holes, to their burrows. So uh, it's very interesting. So kids should be, be able to appreciate that and uh, tell your friends, look, uh, this is very interesting place to, you know, to understand how this difficult and harsh environment uh, can be very useful for people, especially those who live in the cities. Yeah. What do you wish more people know about mangroves? Well, mangrove is also a very important place for people to know so that they can visit there because mangrove is like a floating restaurant, Robert. So who's coming there to the restaurant? There are migratory birds, water birds, who fly a long way away from the north, from the cold weather, heading towards warmer weather. So they stop there to have lunch. So if mangrove is not there, they cannot find food. And these birds are really sitting on a restaurant, I said, floating restaurant. So while the birds are there, beautiful birds, they can be very attractive for people to look at, right? Yeah. Do, do, do you like water birds? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, let, let me show you some of the picture, how beautiful they are. So these birds will sit there in this floating restaurant and looking down and see if there are fish to eat. You know, this is a spoonbill. Uh, when there are fish, they will come down and eat them. Um, and then there are many other species like this probably is this monkey, beautiful. They have a big nose. So if you have mangrove, this place can be very attractive. So people should be able to, you know, visit this place and enjoy what we call ecotourism. So mangrove is very important for people. Yeah. Thank you for answering Good. my questions and for joining me today. And remember, together kids can save the world. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Bye bye. Oh, what a <laughs> heartwarming video. That is the most adorable, <laughs> adorable interview, yeah. I think, out Indeed. of the G20 Summit. <laughs> so, uh, and he has so kid. many great yeah. questions. I think even better questions than that we us. have. I know, asking. I know. Great so, job, great uh, job. He, he's a YouTuber, is he? Yeah. He's a YouTuber yes, he uh, from uh, Canada. From Canada, yes. And the okay. interview happened uh, in July. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you were in the country, in Indonesia. I was in Indonesia. He was in Canada <laughs> with the time difference of I don't know how many hours. Yeah, yeah. He, he just was, finished his uh, school holiday and school it's a holiday. Bit yawning okay. and tiring Aww. and a very boring conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was amazing yeah, just to amazing. see how yeah. he represents the younger yeah. generation, yeah, you yeah. know, and actually also getting all that new knowledge from right. you, the importance right. about mangrove forests. That's, that's the future. That's yeah. the future. Very important. Yeah, yes. indeed. And what's amazing is uh, people like uh, that gorgeous kid that was just speaking to you <laughs> has the power to give this information to, to, the, to his pe yeah. peers, to his friends, uh, through his YouTube mm. channel, through social yeah. media, mm. which uh, they are quite savvy about it. So yeah. what, what it a is. great collaboration. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, how did that collaboration uh, came about between you and this Canadian YouTuber? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched this uh, you know, uh -huh. broadcast and see, oh, this, guy, this uh, little kid is very, very cute and, oh, and, and okay. smart. Uh -huh. and, uh, right. I thought it would be nice to get in touch with him. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then we had the interview, so okay. that's you know, it yeah, it turns out amazing. Great, great partner for the future. Great partner yeah. for yeah, the yeah, future, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> now talking about the young generation, mm. a lot of them are now speaking up. Yeah. you know about uh, the action or maybe inaction uh, from world leaders mm. and governments yeah. about yeah. you know all the targets that they've set up, but yeah. now it's becoming a bit worrisome that yeah, they're not yeah. going to uh, reach it. Some of them, actually, a lot of them are saying, just stop fossil fuel. Now you mentioned about mm, the, right. you know, the energy question, the energy right. crisis that is going on. Is it as simple as that, Prof? Just stop fossil fuel. What do you think should be done? Well, the important thing here is how to change the behavior, right? Mm. Okay. And the behavior is individual, but if you do it collectively, that's a big force, you know, yeah. to pressure 
the policy, the, the way we live and, and use the resources that we have, which yeah. is not abundant anymore. Yeah. It is limited, so we have to use it wisely. Mm. And uh, fossil fuel should be replaced sooner or later. Yeah. Or sooner should be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we still use a lot of coal here in Indonesia and globally mm. still yeah. be, be used. So phasing out of coal okay. is very crucial to mm. have. So that's the immediate yeah. agenda. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Early retirement mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. man coal. And promoting the renewable, the renewable yeah. energy. energy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so young young people play a very important role too. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we've been hearing also stories about uh, mostly uh, scientists who are really concerned about what's happening with the climate change, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, probably most people don't realize what's happening. But we heard mm -hmm. stories about how crucial this yeah. issue mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to a lot of scientists. So please tell us how how dangerous yeah. the situation yeah. right. it is right now. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me go back to the year of 1990s, the early 90s, we were talking about it. Science is not perfect. Yeah. We knew very little and it probably wrong or contains a lot of uncertainties, yeah. but we try to communicate that understanding, that findings, that look, this is worrying because of yeah. the increase of greenhouse gases uh, post uh, pre-industrial period. Mm. And the concentration of carbon dioxide is very alarming. Mm. When I was at school, I used to be told that it is about 300 ppm, you know that mm. yeah. term. And now it's almost double. Mm. Mm. You know, we are reaching of somewhere around 440, 450. Mm. And most of the cause of this increasing uh, concentration is fossil fuel burning, mm -hmm. yeah. deforestation, followed by deforestation. Mm -hmm. So we have to, to do it you know, in those two sectors, if you wish, yeah. energy and land sector. Mm -hmm. And scientists still working um, a lot more to improve you know, the, the understanding, the numbers, uh, uncertainties is reduced very mm -hmm. much now. Yeah. And we are quite certain that the increase of greenhouse gases is alarming. Mm. And then it was put in the UNFCCC, which is now, you know, talking again for the 27th time mm. in the conference mm -hmm. of parties mm. yeah. that uh, this increase of greenhouse gases, global warming, is damaging our okay. atmosphere, yeah. endangering our climate and the life on Earth. Okay. How, how much time do we have? As I said earlier, uh, 250 is almost the limit so to make it zero emission. So we have to work it very hard. Okay, really quick, really hard, Ooh. and collectively. Yeah. Collectively, we cannot no. do it individually. Okay. But so, Prof, I'm sure you agree yeah. that all of us here on TVRR World, right, right. we mm -hmm. believe in the science, mm -hmm. and of course, we support scientists, yeah. and we want to, you know, give out as much as information to the public so they understand mm -hmm. yeah. right. this urgent issue that we're facing. But right. on the other hand. We're also seeing a lot of mis misinformation, right. hoaxes, even anti-science yeah. movements that are going around. They are saying climate change is not real, <laughs> yeah. climate change is not man-made. It's just you know, something it's, it's the just politics like created to sometimes yeah. they gain say voters. You yes, know? exactly. Yeah. Or it's just a natural cycle of how the earth right. works. Yeah. Right. Right. Why do you think this is happening, Prof? The climate skeptic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we keep working uh, as as good as possible, you know, providing information mm. and try very hard to, to convince the policymakers that this is the finding. Again, the, the uncertainty is there. It's not perfect, but uh, we know it now. It's, it's better to do something. We do not know everything, mm. but we know something which is need to be, you know, conveyed uh, soon. Mm. And um, this situation should be able to um, neutralize what, what's been there, you know, as hoax or wrong information. Mm. You know, information can be obtained nowadays very easily, yeah. Yeah. good or bad, but we keep on doing our, you know, our best to, to inform. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a collective effort, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, well, we have to address the big elephant in the room also, speaking yeah. about G20, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, it's uh, one of the biggest economy, but also one of the biggest contributor. Right. Yeah, because they're the biggest industries. Right, right. Yeah. because you know yeah. uh, uh, the, the economy are driven by 
fossil fuels, etc. So yeah. what's yeah. your thoughts on that? Right. The good thing about G20 is there are many other 20, right, mm. around this uh, issue. They were Science 20. I'm part of the S20 okay. to inform the importance of understanding this climate change impacts on health, etc. Yeah. And then Y20, the Youth uh, 20. Mm. So yeah. These people are very keen to hear, yes. you know, uh, good information for mm. them to think about the future. Mm. So all these things merging here. Here's the the, the uh, melting pot in right. Bali. Yeah. Right. And suddenly B20 is very important. Business. You know, business. Yeah. So the issue of climate change should be uh, resolved uh, together. It's not only the task of the government but also the private sector, the mm. business yeah. community as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to be, you know, to have the place, you know, to discuss their challenges, their mm. issues with scientific community, with policy community as well. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's very important to have a, a, a platform <laughs> it is. Yeah. to to, yeah. Uh, to get people together right. and yeah. uh, talk yeah. about it. Yeah, the, yeah. the reason why we have the G20 right. yeah. uh, in the first and, place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, from what I heard, there's uh, some whisperings going yeah. on about, I mean, we heard about, how contentious the paragraph on the war was. Yeah. It was a very heated debate, paragraph but actually, three or four. yes, yeah. wow. but that was not the only paragraph yeah. that was actually heated yeah. and contentious. <laughs> actually, the paragraph about climate change exactly. also took a lot of time yeah. mm. to finally reach right. into an agreement on what to put mm. on the declaration. Mm. That signifies, you know, sure. this yeah. opposing views and interests mm. uh -huh. about how to go about on right. tackling the mm. climate change crisis. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, Prof? <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed there are at least three yeah. uh, numbers, three points in the declaration contains yeah. climate change concern. But uh -huh. uh, the uh, heart of the issue there is how to accommodate all the you know, concern, including yeah. business. Yes. Mm. But uh, as scientists, uh, we are trying to do our best, you know, to inform. Mm. Uh, the technology is, is uh, much greater now, how we measure, yeah. how we model. Mm. Um, we inform those kind of information right away. We have uh, a lot of uh, platform and opportunity to, to do that mm. in, in various uh, locations, including yeah. at the COP. Mm. Scientists uh, have the very uh, platform to have the ears of policy community mm. okay. to directly, you know, inform them what we know about this thing. Yeah. So scientifically, there are uh, clear ways to mitigate on mm. this uh, damage, right. but it's not as easy mm. in practical terms because right. of other interests from business, business, business mm -hmm. communities. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. Right, right. Not only to mitigate. Now the issue of adaptation is also put up. Yeah. Adaptation. Adaptation to climate change. Yeah. It used to be uh, disregarded or uh, have less attention in the past, but since Paris, adaptation has the same attention. Now in in the Paris Agreement, you you do it. Uh, in multi uh, kind of approach, mm -hmm. mitigation and adaptation, mm -hmm. meaning What's that the difference, bro? Mitigation, if you reduce uh, the the emission, mm -hmm. you, you reduce the cost of climate change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and adaptation is you adjust yourself, and um, you know get prepared with the impact of climate change, mm. and that's also costs a lot of money. Uh, in practical uh, efforts so, or, or right. okay for example if if you have less rainfall for example yeah uh, crops rice field will be affected very much uh -huh. because the supply of water for irrigation will be will be affected mm -hmm. so adaptation sector will play its role in you know preparing a better dam but the distribution of I water, see. that's adaptation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The temperature is heating up, you know, forest fire is rampant. Mm -hmm. So you have to adapt yourself with that kind of situation mm -hmm. by having uh, well prepared uh, fire squads, you know, and um, get the uh, water everywhere it's possible. Well, it's drying, but you, you have to find a way of preparing, you know, how to attack fire, and, that's adaptation. And mitigation? Mitigation is reducing the, issue, uh? reducing the emission from the source, mm. Mm. like reducing deforestation and forest degradation, reducing emission from factories, transportation, mm. yeah. 
change the source of energy from fossil to something else, okay. Okay. which is renewable. Hold that thought, Prof. Yes. <laughs> so a lot to be done, yeah. basically. That, that is why it is yeah. a collaborative effort. Yeah, yeah. Collectively, we all, mm -hmm. we yeah, all might make our part yeah, yeah. from it's government topic, level yeah. to <laughs> local communities, I right? Know, yeah. And that is why our next report is actually about local communities living in the mangrove area of Pangpang Bay, Banyuwangi. Pak Eko, Bu Bibit, and Pak Sugiman are fishers living near mangroves and they describe the benefits of mangroves which are rarely heard by most. Mangroves also provide livelihood and food security for their families. They encourage people to conserve mangroves based on their experience, being able to catch more fish as small mangroves have grown. Now this video also includes Hendro, a local mangrove activist who explained the history of mangrove degradation and conservation in Pangpang Pang Bay. And there's also Ibu Ririn, a fisher's wife, who described the importance of her husband's catch from mangroves from her family's meals. All right, let's have a look. Wow, what a wonderful video. I love it. Yeah, yeah? very, very well produced. Very well produced, and very well made. And also the content. Yes, very amazing, inspiring. Amazing. To so. see how local communities benefit success, so much. Success yeah. stories about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, can you tell us more about the video, Prof? This is in Pangpang Pang Bay in Banyuwangi, uh -huh. the eastern part of East Java. Mm. Uh, as you said, this is a success story of yeah. how community are involved in mangrove uh, mm. protection and mm. restoration. Mm. Uh, because the local uh, government, local community knows that their livelihood relies on the existence mm. and protection of yeah. mangrove. Mm. So you do not need to explain further. Yeah. What you need to uh, to do is improving that to be better and better, right? Because they know it is their life which relies depends on uh -huh. the existence. So, yeah. who are the crucial stakeholders mm -hmm. that make these changes possible? Various. Uh, in this uh, particular area, the local leaders are very mm -hmm. important, okay. and the way he uh, communicate with their people are uh, very crucial to you know get help, you know, in, in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, linkages with um, the need of the f uh, community itself, as well as overall is to link this up with the global issues. Yeah. Okay. So they, they found their purpose, you know, mm. being, mm. being there conserving mangrove while they are earning their living mm. from mangrove, they also contribute to the world. Mm. And Mm. It has to be recognized. Right. Yeah. So for this, uh, in this, in this example, it was one of the local leaders that mm -hmm. made a, a, a great a, a yeah. example of it. Yeah. Right. How um, is it possible to persuade local leaders to be willing to do uh, these other, changes? Other local yeah, leaders. Other local yeah. leaders. Um, there's been a lot of effort to bring um, different community and their lead leaders to this place. To Banyuwangi. Mm. To Banyuwangi. To see oh. for themselves. So yeah. they see for themselves yeah. what's happened there. If they do it that way, mm. you know, okay. or bringing them to somewhere else, you know, to to help, you know, to yeah. tell what to do mm. with their contacts in different places. Mm. Okay. So this is not south to south, but local <laughs> community to the local community is very ah. crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So great leadership yeah. uh, on regional level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course you know, clear direction from the top is also much mm, needed right. to make sure that mm. everyone knows how crucial yeah. significant changes needs to be made. And mm -hmm. the benefits. Yes, at know? the grass, grassroots yeah, level though, they, realize they the, have to realize the, the, the economic benefits of it. value. Yeah, I know. It's it has just, to be economic value, yeah, Prof. Yeah, it I think. has, yes, it has very high economic value. Mm. Okay. So that's why it's, you know, very important to bring that yeah. agenda into big uh, campaign of, of mangrove restoration. Right. If you do not improve the livelihood of people, right, does so, not make sense. Well, we talk already about the economic value uh, in, say, microeconomics mm -hmm. or globally. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate a little bit about the economic value for the people there? Mm -hmm. The you mean the the direct? Yeah, yeah. So let's take an example from this Banyuwangi uh, situation. They um, we are we are studying the impact of good feeding to the family um, in terms of the quality of the food. Mm -hmm. Because in many cases, the fish 
and fish product they they get from the ocean from from the pond mm -hmm. is not consumed by themselves they are selling it out and they, right. they, they buy something else mm -hmm. in fact fish are very uh, good source of yeah. Yeah. protein nutrition and uh, it's um, too bad you know if, if they do not consume it themselves uh -huh. so mm. we, we, we try to see this chains of uh, uh, food uh, cycle in, in, in the family, in the villages, uh -huh. how they consume it and what kind of nutrition status uh -huh. of the children below five years mm -hmm. and their schooling, their health, etc. Uh -huh. okay. So we, we go deeper into the impacts of the health and nutrition. I see. And the, okay. the result yeah. turns out that we do not know yet. It's, oh, it's, it's still, still ongoing. ongoing. It's yes. still ongoing. Oh, okay. Looking, right. looking right. forward to uh, the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us more, though, Prof? What sort of support did the local government, maybe in the in the Banyuwangi case, yeah. mm -hmm. give yeah. all those fishermen so they can succeed with this, right. uh, you know, mango forest project? Is it just like some sort of funding or help with the seeds, maybe some Fili training. Yeah, villages now have the so-called dana desa. Dana desa. Ah, and okay. uh, it can go to directly towards that agenda as okay. well. Mm -hmm. ah. So you now uh, they do not need to do something else which is, yeah. you know, uncertain. Mm -hmm. And this is very clear. It will benefit okay. a lot of people. And the uh, local government see this. It's already a tool that they, they right, can right. use. Exactly. So it's, yeah. it's, it's just a matter of a decision, I guess, yeah. Yeah. in the yeah. end, and then the yeah. grassroots uh, yeah. level a decision. And then the, the fishing vessel, you know, if, if they do it in a small boat, they yeah. cannot go far, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In okay. fact, the bigger fishes, the more nutritious, the more expensive fish, yeah. you see the catch yeah. uh, <laughs> far away from the coast. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if the local government uh, smart enough to, you know, allocate the fund, for improving their fishing vessel, mm -hmm. they okay. will get better and better okay. fish. Mm. Because to repeat the question that yeah. the brilliant young YouTuber asked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Canadian Prof, YouTuber. Yeah, the Canadian <laughs> YouTuber that asked uh, uh, Prof early in the interview. He asked, if the mangrove forest is so beneficial, you know, multi-benefits and all, why aren't many people <laughs> Planting it. Right. Why, why is there less and less in the world? And you mentioned about right, right. how smart. expensive it is. Right. Smart question. I had yeah. difficulties in answering <laughs> that question. <laughs> Very smart guy. And then you mentioned about how, yeah, how yeah. expensive actually <laughs> it is. Maybe you can again uh, explain right. your explanation yeah. here. For Indonesia, I think the issue is uh, ownership. Ownership. Uh, land right. ownership. It's not very clear how these people who uh, live in the coastal zone own this land. What the status? Ah. I see. So okay. we call it tenurial system. Yeah. I'm not sure whether they own it. They have piece of paper to, okay. you know, make sure they they can manage and do something. It's not certain. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to make that secure. It's a very complicated issue. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now is it's still not possible to say uh, own a hectare of mangrove well, forest or uh, in in many places this most of the land are owned by the government, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, with scheme like uh, hutan rakyat or mm -hmm. forest, uh, social forestry, it should be possible, you know, they, okay. they are licensed to run a piece of land. Uh -huh. uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, hagi, ha, ha guna usaha, mm -hmm. oh, something okay. like a that. Permit to Permits yeah. to manage it. To manage, yeah. 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 It's not necessarily to own, yeah. okay. but they can manage it as it is expected to be managed. You know. Okay. I see. So, so but if it is not theirs, right? Does it's it difficult. need to be from the yeah. central government? Or this, this I, the central, idea? Is, the, or the area which is called APL is uh, in in the um, area of local government decision mm, okay. to, to decide what to do with that land. Okay. So, are are there also uh, bureaucracy problems? Yeah. in the grassroots level for yeah. these uh, Oh yes, and, and there, are, there are many local elites as well to ah, handle okay. this thing, okay. so right. very, very tricky. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Starting to yeah. get the, Again, the, 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 you know, the, yeah. the picture, the, the pieces <laughs> yeah. of the puzzle starting to come together to... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. again, a uh, perfect illustration on why Prof said great leadership is needed exactly. right. to untangle yeah. all this 
messiness, messiness of the situation. <laughs> right, right. I truly understand now, Prof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Not now going easy, back, yeah. going back to the G20 summit. Yeah. Uh, again, we always talk in economic terms when it comes to the G20. Mm -hmm. We also mentioned here. It's an economic forum. Yes, yeah. and yes. you know, even the problem with the mango forest, right. it, it comes down to explaining the economic value to the local communities. Right. Now, from the G20 level, of course, the government is now trying to attract more investors yeah. right, to Indonesia, not just for mango forests, but in general for the clean energy transition mm -hmm. uh, projects. Mm -hmm. How do you think the government you know, should step forward so they can attract more investors? Because right now, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's still a bit of a problem. There are some hurdles here and there. Sure. What, what are the biggest hurdles, and how should we overcome it? Oh, difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the expert on that. But <laughs> like uh, the people of common, uh, I, I have the uh, concern that uh, business should not be alienated. Okay. It should be part of the solution. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, they have the resources to do that, but probably not the ideas or the mind to go that direction mm. because mm. of the you know, quick uh, turnaround, quick profit, etc., etc. So yeah. the reasons of cash flows. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so if we are talking about sustainability, okay. yeah. about next generation, yeah. so the change which is needed is the behavior. Mm. Mm. So if the business changes the behavior by yeah. not, you know, looking for what's going to happen in the next three, five years, but mm. 20, okay. 30 years to come, yeah. that should be the way business is involved. Is it possible, though, to find investors that are willing to invest in such long-term <laughs> well, returns? If, if their business is uh, relies on the natural resources, oh, right? Okay. So nature-based solution is the answer. And so okay. far, do we already have uh, big players from the business? Oh yes, communities? there are many. Oh, okay. Uh, the biggest um, revenue uh, creator is oil palm. Mm, well, oh, okay. yeah, pulp yeah. and paper, they are rely on the mm. natural resources. So yeah. if they are involved, uh, yeah. then it should be in that direction. In the going. context of uh, mangrove as a business yeah. endeavor, do we mm -hmm. have players, big players as well? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, mangrove also expanding to mangrove, uh, sorry, oil palm is also expanding to mangrove area eh? as well. Oh. Really? Yes. How? So is there a conflict then, Prof? Yeah, very serious one, <laughs> and uh, they drain the the water, and okay. it's get less saline so that oil palm can grow there. Okay, so there needs to, to be, be some sort of compromise. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, yes. Each interest are still met, and again with the issue of sustainability. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. then again, that's why there's G20, yeah. COP, and everything, so mm -hmm. people can get yeah. a platform to yeah. sit down together at least. To I'm not. I'm not saying the oil palm is bad, you know, yeah. but the way it is, you know, expanded should be, mm. you know, treated in such a way that mm. yeah. it looks for the future as mm. well, you know, and then also aquaculture. Right. Big okay. expansion of aquaculture should be mm. sustainable. Mm -hmm. and uh, not yeah. for 10 years or mm. so. A lot of retired mm. uh, fish pond, mm. uh, shrimp pond mm. are only 10 years life, mm. lifetime okay. and that's not good. Okay. So I'm speaking about the future, uh, what's the target for C4, let's say, for the next five years, 10 years in the context of preservation? C4 is a research organization. We, mm. we keep producing numbers and yeah. information. And, and hopefully that can be yeah. Useful. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm also a professor at the university, so I can have students uh, coming to help with the research. So yeah. uh, young generation, so yeah. we, we can raise that awareness through science of, uh, you know, next yeah. scientists yeah. Yeah. from IPB University and, and <laughs> other universities. We are absolutely lucky yes. to have you, Prof. Thank you for being here and thank you for being a part of uh, Indonesia. Yes, yeah? of course. Thank you for your insights, you Prof. We learned so much yeah. about the <laughs> Thank topic. Thank you so much. All Thank the you best so for much. you and your team as well. At Thank C4. you very much. Thank you. A pleasure. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we just had this insightful discussion. I mm -hmm. think we need a little bit of a break right now. All right. <laughs> but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. See you in a bit.